So uh, last week I was supposed to put a video up about this uh, this website who is basically going on about just about historical uh, when it comes to history of comic books and movies. People just who who basically started writing last year or five years ago, ten years ago when um, when uh, Iron Man came out as a you know as a huge hit, tend to forget that there's a whole there's decades of comic book movies and even whew, 80 years you go back all the way to when batman was getting uh, made into tv shows uh you had um oh there was a female characters way back when um there were superheroes uh, that were being made on tv sh series uh i think it was isis isis way back in the 70s uh late 60s a female character uh, the god Isis uh, superheroine, uh, you had uh, Wonder Woman, you had Bionic uh, Woman, you had all these amazing characters. And what happens with people now who have just started to write blogs, who is just starting to get their websites up and running, they don't actually look into the history of things. They don't actually look at what's come before. And they, they start talking about what happened last year or what happened in the last five years. And they think the next best thing is what's the what's the biggest thing. And when you have that, you kind of lose sight of all the history and all the hard work that both males and females have done and have brought entertainment through to, for, to us. All the writers, all the greats. Um, you had amazing writers over at, um, you know, Shelley Bond. And I can't remember, I think it's Catherine Kahn. Um, there's some, several others over at uh, Vertigo and, and DC Comics who basically were the greatest edit editors that I can think of because they let out some of the, I mean, produced some of the greatest uh, things that uh, DC actually created outside of superhero comics. If you look at the Vertigo line before the last maybe five years, they were just the greatest things. You had Preacher, you had, um, you had, um, where are we? Um, you had Hal Blazer, which was amazing, 300 issues, one of the biggest running non-comic uh, book, um, non-superhero comic books of all time, one of my favorite characters of all time, right next up there to Batman. So, you know, um, and of course, out of um, Hal Blazer, you had, uh, you had other characters that came out with Sandman, which is regarded as one of the great books. Um, and out of that, you had Lucifer, which is a TV series now, which I really, really love, which I really enjoy. The characters on that are just so great. And um, it's a modernized version. And here's the thing. Modernized doesn't mean that you, you, you know, you sort of forget what's, what's in the past. The thing is that you work off that and you really realize and you give that character a real good depth. One of the things I'm realizing now is that every time a new movie comes out, people don't know how to promote it the right way. And they use... Um, uh, clickbait they use um, they use buzzwords to actually try to promote stuff like misogyny like diversity like inclusivity uh, you know all these these words that actually don't mean anything because when you look at them they don't actually it's like they don't actually actually do that see if you look at oh, like okay Captain Marvel right she talks about how you know uh, you know we're all about diversity but Captain Marvel, the female version of Captain Marvel was first black, right? So, Rebecca, um, gosh, I always forget names. Rambo, Monica Rambo, right? Police officer uh, who got called Captain Marvel afterwards. So, you know, that. so if you get offered a role and you say, hey, okay, so I've, I've got this role, I'm going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And if you're, if you truly, truly are principled and believe, you know what? I don't think you guys should do a movie about Captain Marvel who's white, but hey, there is a Captain Marvel and actual Captain Marvel historically who's black. So I, as a person who really are about diversity and are about inclusivity, would just go, hey, this role belongs to this person. Why don't you go and hire someone of that same <laughs> caliber, you know, um, acting wise and same um, same um, um, race, right? There we go. Principle. Excellent. Sell a billion tickets. But of course, they don't. So, and then, then again, you've got the same thing with Vixen, um, right? Dinah, um, with Birds of Prey right now. You've got Dana, Dinah, Dinah, I always get it wrong. 
Dina, D-I-N-A-H. You know, so you got Dinah Lance, um, and so she's, historically, she's a white character, as we also know, in Arrow, she's white. So if you've got these, I think it's about eight seasons, of Arrow on the CW, where the character's actually white, why do you want to then change her to a token black character? Why not just bring in Vixen, right? So then, because you're principled, right? You're all about being principled, you're all about being honoring and diversity, then be honoring and diverse and bring in a black superhero who's actually black, not go and race off that character and then go, hey, hey, all you black people, all you dark skinned people, all you brownies, accept this person as this person, as this character now. That doesn't work. And I've listened to a whole lot of um, comic book commentators who are black who are saying, this is wrong. All right. So those guys are saying it's wrong. And the people who are fans of the character are saying this is wrong. Then you're wrong. Because it, you can't just suddenly change things around just to fit your latest buzzword. Right. You can't do that because that's just dishonorable to the creators of that, firstly, and dishonorable to the fans of that historically right and the other thing is majority of comic book watching uh audience is male and right doesn't matter that's the way it is it's the reality of the thing you can't change reality but then if you go out and say this isn't for you then they won't come and watch it right they won't come and watch it if you say if you go out and say this isn't for you because all you're doing is harming your ticket sales and if you're harming your ticket sales, then you can't complain. If you get out there like Ewan McGregor and say, hey, this is all about misogyny. This is going to make, uh, you know, this is going to teach you guys a lesson. This is going to make you man stand up. It's like, well, Ewan, you make hundreds of millions of dollars from pretending to be other characters, other people. You pretend to be a real person for a movie for six months out of, or three months, depending how long it, it takes them to make a movie these days depending on the CGI and the post-production. Now, when, you, when you're doing this, you actually are out there doing the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be out there going, hey, this is a comic book movie. This will be, you know, come out and watch it. Come and, you know, come and see it for yourself. We did a hard work. We worked on this, spent six, six months, three months on this, really busting our butt. Uh, you know, we want to entertain you because, hey, first of all, we go to movies, we read books, we read comic books, we listen to music for enjoyment first. That's the whole point, to be entertained, not to be preached at. So the moment you start preaching at people, they'll turn off, right? If you want to be preached at, go to church, right? Movies aren't church, right? We don't need, we don't need movies to tell us that we're sinners, right? We're going to hell, we, that we need to change our ways. We're evil people. Movies seem to be doing that right now it's like it's like they've, they've forgotten that they're there for the fantasy period of our lives that for an hour and a half to two hours we're out there to be entertained we pay money to go to be entertained and sadly they don't they don't they're trying to mix documentary and entertainment there's a reason why there's documentaries documentaries where you preach right there's a reason why they call it documentary right um like, as you know, I'm a film, I've studied filmmaking for three years for my degree. Um, and so I understand which, which movies and which genres where what fits where. So we want escapism in our movies. We don't want to be, have, the, have the preachers at the, in the movies preaching to us, telling us how bad we are. It doesn't matter whether, whether it's aimed at females, at males, at, at, at LBGTQIA people. It doesn't matter. We just don't want to be preached at. And at the end of the day, entertainment is an, is an escapism, right? We want to escape and out of our normal, everyday, horrible, good, whatever situations we're feeling. We're getting yelled at at work with bosses. We're getting, you know, driving home. People are peeping at us, annoying the hell out of us, you know, telling us to drive fast or slow down or whatever. Uh, kids are hassling, you know, spouse is going off, bills are not paid. So you want to go in just for an hour and a half, go and get entertained. Away, sit in a theater, 
and just close off your brain and think. Now, the reason Netflix is doing so good and why theaters are going to do so bad is because of this one reason. We can turn off the Netflix show, all right? We can switch off as soon as we feel we're preached to, but you can't do that in the movies. You can walk out. If you're lucky, you can get your money back and go, this isn't for me. Sorry, I was expecting something else. I want my money back, all right? At the end of the day, if the marketing team's out there saying this movie isn't for you, then those people won't go see it, all right? And then you can't turn around and complain. Now, that, that brings me to Jerry Conway, all right? Jerry Conway basically got up on, on, you know, on Twitter yesterday and just did a whole whole bunch of rants um, blaming teenage boys for not watching you. We're going to see um, Harlequin on Birds of Prey, right? And it's not a Birds of Prey movie. It's a Harlequin movie. That's why they, they just did the name change because they realized that it's not a Birds of Prey movie. If you, if you, Birds of Prey has basically got nothing to do with this movie, right? If you read the comic books, which I have and which I enjoy, um, and I actually have number eight, the earliest version of, of like one of the first runs of um, of um, Birds of Prey, right? Signed copy, right? Um, it's you know it's a, such a great run, and I actually watched the Birds of Prey series back in two thousand. Amazing show came out here in about about ten o'clock at night. I think it lasted for one season, and I would have loved to have seen that carry on. Maybe that's what they should bring back, and you know on the WB and uh, Warner Brothers TV streaming, whatever, and put that on because it's a great show. And it just talks about Dinah coming out of, um, if I remember right, Dinah coming out from small town into Gotham and joining the crew. Oracle and so on and Huntress. Um, good show. I enjoyed that. I think that, um, that was, you know, 2000, 20 years ago. So why not do that? Gotham City Sirens, why not do that? No, because at the end of the day, they have a political message they want to preach at. So if you want to preach, preach at the church. Go join a church, go join a religious group and preach there. Go make documentaries about how bad men are, how bad women are, how bad mums who stay at home and look after the kids are, or whoever uh, trans people are. Just go do your documentaries, preach, do that. But if you want people to go watch your movies, just stop preaching. 